I'm going to talk about the TNA appliance today because it's gotten quite popular. Uh, I've noticed a lot of people that comment the things on their content are thinking about it. So I figured I'd share my thoughts. So what is this TNA appliance? Let me give a little context on it. It was developed by a Dr. Dave Singh. So he's a dentist who positions himself as a pioneer in what he calls pneumopedics so developing the airway through dental appliances and he founded a foundation for airway health and you know he's so i think he, he's been around at this dna appliance ever since i got into this game back in 2014 so i think he predates me and he's been around for quite a while so this dna appliance itself kind of like expander slash retainer it fits out to your upper teeth you wear it both nighttime and daytime it has screws that you gently expand and it kind of forces the pellet open and opens the airway so in terms of how much it costs so it depends on the dentist i think there's a there's a, it's quite a few dentists that are certified on this now we're pushing it as you got in the us the average probably runs between six to twelve grand from what i saw and so it's just more of like a premium so this is going to be more expensive than like braces for example and they claim that this appliance addresses all kinds of issues like sleep apnea, snoring, TMJ, facial asymmetry, neurological issues, and that improves facial aesthetics. What, what are they saying about how this works? So they're saying that, yeah, they believe kind of similar to the muse that modern lifestyle factors have led to facial underdevelopment and that this appliance unlocks the epigenetics. So epigenetics are like the buttons that turn on our genetics, right? So their theory is that because we missed the valve due to these modern lifestyle, that certain buttons weren't pushed. And if you wear this appliance, it unlocks that genetic growth. And that's what gets you your expansion and everything else. And so they, you know, try to position this as a very healthy way of expanding and improving aesthetics. And similar to appliances like the ALF, they also promote working with potty workers like osteopaths and then doing cranial work to facilitate the changes that the appliance brings. And the duration of the treatment, I think is real last usually from out of a year and a half to two years, I believe, is, is probably the average. So how does this compare to other expanders? So you have expanders like the MARPA, which is surgically assisted expansion. And so you put these without, you kind of dig in and you anchor directly to the bone to try to achieve this expansion. Whereas with the DNA, you're not doing that. So it's less invasive, which is probably a good thing. And it's said to work more uh, with the body's natural process case, right? So they, they very much position it as a, a healthy or the healthiest expansion device on the market. So now for my view. My view is it's useless. Definitely detrimental. Why? Because it's still at the end of the day as crude as it's better, right? It is using bone and teeth to push outwards. You push on teeth, you're going to tip the teeth. You push on bone, you're going to derange the bones of the cranium. That is just how it works. Like you cannot push on bone or teeth directly and get expansion of the soft tissue balloon that I talk about. I've never seen it, right? I've never seen a person wear a caudal expander and talk about ripping through their face or their scalp the way that you will if you're doing, you know, something with a mouth guard that will revive quickly, right? You will not get lines from the expansion, right? Which means to me that the skull is not expanding. And if this balloon is not expanding, you're just pushing the things that are inside it around. And you're most likely pushing it into a more asymmetric way. So could you get a, a bigger airway? Yes. But at what cost, right? If you're forcing airway open and you're deranging the rest of the bones, like you're probably creating other issues. And the reality is you don't need this, right? It's expensive. It's a bit invasive in that it's forcing everything. And if you look at the results of even the myobase, which is for off 30 plus years, like you will see even more impressive results of expansion teeth straightening than this DNA appliance, right? So if a simple appliance that is non-invasive, like a mouth guard, can give you the same results at a fraction of the cost and it's you know healthier for you, why would you ever do these types? of expanders like that is my my view right and then when you look at these people that have worn these dna which you typically see right they flared the teeth right 
you're flaring your teeth and then like I look at the person's skull, okay? Did they expand anything? Does it look like the skull is inflating? No, like in my view, when I look at these before and afters, I think their skulls have either stayed the same or actually kind of collapsed in a little bit, which we coincided with what I think the physics that they're using is doing it to the skull, which is a bad collapsing force. And all you actually need is to put vertical be create, unlock the occlusion, and the thing is going to inflate in a good way. And, and I think the, the the even more interesting thing, which I think is it's done so poorly, is what do these people look like and how do they function some years on, five years, ten years, right? Whenever I hear someone that has done an expander in their child, the little one, like I ask them for the details. And usually you hear of some health issues and other issues that happened after they used this expander. My very strong hypothesis is, is that when you're talking several years or five, ten years on, people that have used a DNA appliance, like how are they doing? I am pretty sure you're going to hear a lot of stories of people getting worse. Right, and I, I noticed that this DNA appliance was cleared for FDA compliant for OSA in children. So OSA is obstructive sleep apnea, which they define as having a greater than five score for apnea index or AHI. Apparently, 28 percent of patients had their API AHI index drop below this sleep apnea threshold. And so meaning that about 28% of people that use the appliance didn't have sleep apnea anymore. I guess that's the threshold for a quarter of people improve their airway, but yet they probably didn't pay any attention to anything else, any other types of collapse or health issues. And all of a sudden, this appliance is being pushed as this healthy option that is FDA cleared, and I think it's an absolute joke. I'll leave you with one metaphor, which is how I think about this appliance and expanders in general. So you have this collapsing building, which is your skull, right? And these expanders, they like to tout the fact that they open the airway and they improve breathing a little bit. So you can imagine this collapsing building, and you go in there and you like, you have this, like, you know, one of those things that drills tunnels. It drills, you know, the ones that drill tunnels to a mountain, right? Can you get one of those? You just drill a tunnel right through the, the collapsed building. The whole thing collapses further a little bit, but now you got this tunnel, right? And then, you know, like you declare it a win. Oh, I can walk through the tunnel now. Like I can walk through this building, right? That, that is kind of like thinking about, okay, we improved the airway, but the whole building is still collapsing and collapsing even faster because you drilled this tunnel and you declared a win. That's this, what the DNA does. Oh my